Our planet is about 70% water, most of which is unexplored. Yet we have NASA, an organization dedicated to exploring outer space. Don't you find it strange that we've got a whole organization dedicated to exploring the outer space, yet not one for our own oceans? You know, I have seen and heard some theories saying that NASA was originally dedicated to exploring our oceans. These theories may be unfounded, but what if they're not? What if NASA's original purpose was to explore the oceans? If it was, why did they swiftly change? And why has their goal become getting off world as fast as possible? Are they running from something? All these questions are ones that interest me. So today I'm going to talk about 10 possible reasons NASA stopped exploring the oceans. So now in no particular order, at number one, we have sea monsters. Now from the Leviathan to Cthulhu to the Kraken, having gigantic sea creatures or monsters is a very real possibility. Like if we take a biblical account of sea creatures, we see that the Leviathan was actually actively mentioned. It was said that like everything else, God created a pair of Leviathans. But seeing the pair, he grew wary of their strength. Having such beings procreate would be detrimental to the humans, so he killed the female. Yes, the female. Meaning, there could very well be a male leviathan in the ocean, doing nothing. These theories may not be actually unfounded. You see, NASA had a depth exploration mission in 2022. The mission was dubbed Practice for exploring the moon's oceans. They explored the Heddel Zone, and it is believed they saw things. Massive things. This was actually confirmed by an astronaut named Garrett Reisman, who claimed to have seen the eye of a massive creature. He compared the size of the eye to a flying saucer. Interesting comparison. But it doesn't end there. So, I saw something on Reddit, maybe not a credible source, but a source nonetheless. The article was allegedly written by a former NASA scientific researcher. The researcher belonged to a division that was in charge of studying deep sea life. The first case study mentioned was a Monticera oil rig diving incident. The incident can be summarized as follows. So basically, NASA had a deal with a, a private organization to investigate an unknown anomaly. Uh, metal parts at the bottom of the rig had taken damage from an unknown source and three divers were sent to investigate. As expected of these kinds of stories, the dive did not go well. Something never seen before was down there with the divers. The creatures allegedly resemble an extremely intelligent class of giant cephalopods. These cephalopods were defined as strong, carnivorous, and extremely large. The divers had no means to defend themselves as these creatures worked in unison and displayed high understanding of human equipment. The creatures used their strong tentacles to de-equip the divers and one diver was choked. It is said that the creatures were able to change their body color at will and show signs of satisfaction after every kill. Amazingly, the third diver escaped with the use of an underwater flare as a distraction. The retelling was his, and as it stands, fire is the only known weakness of these things. If you're interested in this story, a link to the post can be found in the description, but don't forget to like and subscribe. Now at number two, we have special places. So when I say special places, I'm talking about no-go areas. Places where things, even up to the size of airplanes, vanish. An example of that would be the famed Bermuda Triangle, which is, surprisingly, not the only one of its kind, as there's also the Michigan Triangle. Now, what makes these spots special is the large number of disappearance, plane crashes, and shipwrecks that have allegedly happened around such areas. There's no single possible explanation for all these, but some people have theorized stuff like electromagnetic radiation, spatial disturbances, and even magic. So while I can't claim to know what goes on there, maybe NASA does, and they're not telling us. Okay, now at number three, we've got eddies. Eddies are like the black holes of the ocean, and similar to black holes, they suck everything in. These things are circular uh, currents of water, kind of like whirlpools that form in the ocean. They are usually quite big and can even be seen from space. Although these things don't have the mystique of black holes, some would argue that death by drowning is not the best way to go. Number four brings us to missing missiles. So in 2011, some World War II explosives, about 87 of them, washed up shore in an England beach, surprising many. The situation was swiftly handled by a bomb squad of five and there were no casualties. 
But all in all, that is still a scary situation, and it's probably much worse as the United States alone has reported five missing nuclear warheads. So how many has Russia lost? Or China? Or North Korea? And is that the actual number the US has lost? Look, if I was NASA and I knew I was surrounded by nukes, I would want to leave as well. At number five, we've got other intelligent species. We haven't explored over 80% of our oceans. So I find, I find it difficult to understand why we see ourselves as the most intelligent race, race on the planet. I mean, if you think about it, a lot could be down there and we just don't know. In fact, the dolphins could have some crazy underwater civilizations, or there could be mermaids or just anything native to Earth that's more intelligent than mankind. They just don't bother to interact with us because we're too stupid. Maybe they view everything above water as a kind of zoo and they're observing us like we do the apes. At six, underwater volcanoes. Did you know that about 80% of all volcanic eruptions take place underwater? Yeah, and 90% of all those are found along a belt called the Ring of Fire that encircles the Pacific Ocean. In fact, underwater volcanoes are so big that around two years ago, the most powerful underwater volcano ever recorded erupted off the coast of the tiny island nation of Tonga in the Pacific Ocean, about 2,000 kilometers from New Zealand. The underwater eruption was powerful enough to send water into the stratosphere. At seven, UFOs. With the oceans being so large and unattended, it comes as no surprise that UFO sightings have been reported all over the place. And although I can't verify these claims, I find it very possible because what honestly makes you think that we're alone in this wide and completely unexplored universe? Yeah, also take the Solomon Islands as an example. For hundreds of years, even before the internet age, there's been talks about objects hovering all over the place and making their descent. Eight, asteroids. So during the formative years of our planet, which took billions of years, our planet was bombarded by countless asteroids and comets. Scientists at NASA believe that it was these comets and asteroids that brought water to Earth. With all that water naturally comes organic matter. Most of that organic matter could have been what spawned humanity and life on Earth as we know it, but maybe those organic matter spawned other things? Maybe it wasn't just organic matter that hopped off, but actual living beings, who knows? At nine, experiments gone wrong. So picture this. The governments of the world became incredibly interested in some of the known species of the ocean. It got so interesting that they decided to play God. Gathering some of their best biological experts, they experimented on these creatures and spawned their own. Uh, they had done it, but alas, they were but mere mortals and made fatal mistakes. Gas chambers exploded, untold horrors escaped, and the underwater facilities came crashing down. The governments of the world had messed up, and they noticed it. So, like any good government, they decided to make a hasty retreat and move most of their stuff to the land. A new research direction had come to mind, leaving Earth. The creatures they had spawned were mostly aquatic, but they evolved too fast, so it was prone to change. Now it's a race against time. The humans versus the government spawn who would evolve fast enough to leave their home ground. Now, while the story I just gave sounds like a well-thought-out movie plot, maybe it's not. Number 10, underfunding. NASA could have stopped exploring the ocean for a simple reason like underfunding. Maybe they just weren't being paid enough. Uh, the stuff they saw in the oceans was too serious and the funds were not enough, so the program was cut. When the funds came back, they had found a new direction, outer space. All right, that's all I've got for today. So thank you for your time. And if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and see you in some other video.